Hello, I'm Odin, and today I'm going to make another requested prop from my Patreon. It's Lando Calrissian's Skiff Guard Helmet, as seen in Return of the Jedi. I'm starting with the same dome pattern I originally made for the Heavy Infantry Mandalorian Helmet. That dome has served me well, but I only need the three pattern pieces to actually make the dome. I copy the pattern onto some 6mm HD foam and start cutting it out. I need two copies of each piece, a left half and a right half. I use my heat gun and my planishing stake to curve each piece. The dome is curved, so gluing together curved pieces is much easier than gluing flat pieces. I glue them together with contact cement following the registration marks. And I get a full dome that will be the great start for the helmet. I take some measurements for the size of the dome and trace the circumference onto some poster board, which gets me a good start on the brim that'll go around the helmet. A little modification, or two, or maybe even three, and I have a pattern that I can cut to make the brim. I also make some rough sketches for the visor pattern. When it was close, I folded it in half to be sure the sides were symmetrical, and then I cut a new one to use as my pattern. I trace both of these pattern pieces onto some four millimeter what the foam. The four millimeter is black, which is good, and what the foam is a stiffer, stronger type of EVA foam, so it'll hold the brim shape really well and it'll be difficult to crush or wrinkle. I cut the inside edge on an angle because the brim is also on one, and that provides a little more surface area on the edge for gluing the parts together. I also added tabs for even more support. The visor edge is cut on an angle, and I glue it following a pencil line that I made that runs from the dome edge up to the first registration mark on the center line of the dome, and then back down to the other edge again. I cut out the excess dome material from under the visor. I don't think it needs to be there. I think I've got a working shape. What I need to do is the top of the helmet is actually leather. I'm still gonna do it out of foam, but in the original movie, it's actually leather. So I'm gonna take some aluminum foil and duct tape and pull a pattern because it's got four strips, there's two and two, and then two little ones here, so I guess six total. So I'm gonna figure out the patterns for those pieces so I can get those put on. I only need to cover half the dome with a foil. I started with a symmetrical pattern, so I only need to make a symmetrical pattern again. I start drawing the pattern by copying the center line and around the edge of the dome. That way I can measure between the two lines a few times and get a nice, even set of lines for the leather cover. Let's transfer these to something more usable and then glue down some more foam. I cut the foil on my lines and copied them onto the poster board. I also add a little on the edge of the smallest piece because it's supposed to go onto the brim a little bit. Then I copy the new pattern pieces onto some two millimeter HD foam, making sure that I have a left and a right side for each piece. And I cut out all of the pieces. I have the two millimeter pieces cut, but they need to look like the back of a baseball glove, not just glued down flat. So I cut another set of panels from some half inch polyfoam, but I cut these thinner along the sides and I cut each of the edges on an angle. And I lay all the pieces large side down and then coat the angled sides and the smaller top with contact cement. This is the first type of foam that I started working with in my puppetry class back in college. The open cell foam soaks up more of the cement, so it takes a little longer to dry which gives me a chance to tell you about this video's sponsor, Private Internet Access. Private Internet Access is the leading no-log VPN service. Now, why would you need a VPN? Well, I use one all the time while traveling, which I plan to do more of when the conventions open up again. You can hide your IP address, replace it with one from another network, and conceal your location and digital footprint. PIA VPN will work wherever I could go because it has unlimited access to over 3,000 servers in 49 countries. And I can still use my streaming services while abroad. Just log in with my PIA VPN account, set my server to my home area, and I can still see my Amazon Prime, Hulu, Disney Plus, and Netflix. And if your home area is the UK, it'll work with Netflix UK and the BBC as well. Plus, PIA VPN has dedicated apps for all platforms and offers simultaneous connections for up to 10 devices. I don't have to deactivate my tablet just to use PIA on my laptop. PIA VPN was founded in 2010 and includes great features such as a kill switch button and no logging ever. See why PIA VPN is PC Mag Editor's choice for 2020 with a 30 day money back guarantee. Help support my channel and check it out for yourself with my link below. You'll get a 77% discount and two extra months for free. 
go ahead, just click it. It's just right there, just a little click. And thank you very much. I use the aluminum foil pattern pieces to mark where the seams will go on the helmet. And I coat the helmet with glue, and wait for it to dry and be ready, and then place the polyfoam strips inside the seam lines. Because the sides are cut on an angle, I end up with a puffy shape in each panel. And then I can add more glue and lay the corresponding two millimeter foam panels over each polyfoam mound. And it's okay if the seams don't perfectly match because I'm gonna cover them next. I just try to reduce the amount of wrinkles caused by gluing a flat thing over a rounded thing. I don't think I've made a foam helmet intentionally lumpy before. I like this, this is working for me. This is cool, I can see this working out. I'm gonna take some foam dowels and cover up these seams, and then I need to do uh, the, the belt pieces. Using thin EVA foam dowels from TNT Cosplay, I cover each seam. I am also pressing the dowels down into each seam, and I just cut the excess off as needed. It might be a little poofier than it needs to be, but it's really hard to tell, I think it's okay. I cut a strip of four millimeter foam for the band that runs around the helmet. I cut some of the dowels flat because I don't want bumps along the band. I need another shorter piece for the forehead band. So we'll do this first. Then we need to, I need the forehead band to be thinner at the ends. So I fold it in half and then cut from the end. Kind of arbitrary, kind of hope we're doing something sort of right. Okay. And I get a shaped piece for my forehead band. I can glue it on with contact cement. Yeah, there we go. There are five little gold bumps on the front band. Now I don't have anything exactly right, so I cut some small pieces of weather stip bunting and glue them onto the front band. Then I can carefully use a heat gun to melt those into a lumpy shape. Okay. It is possible they're still too long, so let's fix that on these guys. Might be able to help him a little bit. There we go. That'll be all right. Are they perfect? No, but they're fine because they're there. I cut a strip of two millimeter foam and glue it around the back to complete the band. There are three almost square bumps on each side of the brim. They represent the fasteners that hold the face guard in place. Okay, so I got the helmet basically done. It needs to be painted. Need to do the, the face guard, which looks like it's made from mandibles from something. So I think I'm gonna do that with uh, the same type of squishy foam and latex. Size do I need this to be? Looks like it's like four inches. I use my foam ruler to find out how long to make the face guard. That's five, okay, five, 10, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19. So about 19 inches, okay. And I draw one half of the mandible shape and make a pattern. And I marked where I want the teeth to go because I want both sides to look the same. It looks like it's gonna work just fine. And I cut a set from some half inch polyfoam. Uh, the circles are where the teeth are gonna go. I have concern over the foam being too thick, so I use an electric carving knife to cut each side in half. The cut side is not even at all, but that's okay, it'll add to the organic look. I glue each thinner piece, cut side down, to some two millimeter EVA foam. And this will be the backing for the mandibles. And the six millimeter strip on the end is how I'm gonna glue it to the underside of the helmet. I mock up everything with blue tape. This lets me see how big the front grill needs to be and if the mandibles are sitting correctly. So Joe, while you're here, would you please go plastic at that? I can. Thank you. <laughs> I cut off the side of the tooth marks because it's easy to put them back on. And then I use a wood burner with a very light touch to carve edges and to reduce the flat foam look. To make the skin, I paint liquid latex rubber right onto the foam. Now this cheap brush sheds a little, but that's not really gonna be a big deal. Before the latex dries, I pat on pieces of facial tissue paper. 
A thin paper towel would also work, but just make sure that the one that you're using doesn't have a quilted dimensional pattern because you'll probably see it once the latex dries. I let the latex mostly set and then add another layer over both parts. The single ply of paper tears pretty easily when it's wet. I dab the latex on with a torn bit of foam. I don't want brush strokes. And I make sure that the sides are sealed so I go over and onto the back of the foam. So let's give these a little bit of time to dry a little bit and I'll put, start putting some veins and, and bumps for the horns to go on. Joe gave me a hand making the teeth. We made two full sets of curled tusks and some extra smaller teeth because it's going to take a couple of days for the EVA foam to dry and the extra teeth will let me pick the best ones for the final piece. And yeah, it's going to be a lot faster to just uh, make a couple extra now and throw them away than, oh, I need one new one at the last minute. <laughs> Thinking ahead? What's that? Uh, experience. I need more texture on the mandibles. Twisting up small pieces of tissue and sticking them down with latex is an easy way to do it. I make tendons and better bumps for the gums that go around the teeth. And putting a piece of tissue over this new stuff makes it all look like it's under the skin. And a little more stippled latex to help hide the seams. After the black plastic dip dried, Joe also spray painted the brim with a dark bronze or dark silver color. I paint the leather portion with a base of lighter brown from Platifex Paints. It takes two coats of paint for a good cover, and I use longer brush strokes to minimize those brush stroke marks. And the tape protects the visor from getting painted. After the brown paint dries, I mix up a dark brown that is almost black and stipple it over the light brown. This is meant to look like the oil stains from handling the leather, not shadows in the cracks, so the dark colors are actually on the high areas. Once the layer is dry, I cover everything with some brown shoe polish because for me to get a good rich leather color, I just use something that's made for coloring leather. In between coats of paint on the helmet, I mix some Pax paint for the mandibles. I have a full explanation of just what Pax paint is on my face hugger video. But the basics of Pax, or PAX, is a mixture of latex-based prosthetic adhesive mixed with acrylic paints. And this makes a paint that is a flexible glue and it really sticks to latex rubber. I mix a little darker of a color and then selectively add more color on the mandibles. And then I make a very red pinkish color for the base of each tooth and some other places that look good. I lighten up those accent colors by stippling the base color over them again. Now I didn't cover them completely, I just want to make those colors a little lighter. And I'll seal the mandibles with Ultra Mod Podge Matte. That'll stop them from being sticky because I painted them with glue. It's been two days and the teeth are ready to paint. I mixed up a dark ivory color as my base. It will take two coats of paint to cover the gray EVA foam clay. Having all the teeth stuck to bits of foam core is really nice for painting. And then I frosted the ends of each tooth with some white. Now, not a full coat. I let the undercoat of ivory kind of come through. All the paint on the helmet is dry and I can peel the tape and add just a hint of black shoe polish to the brim under the band and around those bolts. I used the spacer pattern that I made previously to figure out how long to cut the dowels for the front grill. And painting the dowels with glue was an adventure. <laughs> I can see disaster looming. <laughs> let go. <laughs> it's just going to stick. <laughs> let go, 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 let go. <laughs> When the glue was set, I stuck them together, keeping everything straight. It would be easy to twist them at this point, and I don't want to do that. I cut each end of the grill on an angle, and then glue it to a tab of wet the foam. Now I can glue this tab to the two millimeter foam that's on the back side of each mandible. I cut small pieces of dowel that can wrap around each tusk, and contact cement will hold that ring onto the base. I made all of them this way, because I'll just pick the best four. I glue the grill onto the EVA foam backing on the mandibles, and not having teeth on yet lets me really mash the glue together. I set each small tooth where it needs to be glued, and while the glue dries for the teeth, I paint the grill with a gold color. I let a lot of the black show through because it has a good weathered look. I also painted the rings on all the tusks and the five rivets on the helmet. I was careful not to get glue on the teeth when I was sticking them down because that would be really bad at this point. There we go. Oh, that's looking great. 
The glue in the tusks is drying, so I add some silver rub and buff on the edges of the brim, just for a little more weathering. I stick the four tusks in place, and I really wanted the mandibles to sit in just the right place and not just be stuck on. So when it looks right, I only glue down one side first, and then I figure out the other side. Most of the materials I use are available for order and have shipped right to you. I put a list and some links in the description. The name Skiffguard Helmet actually comes from the original Kenner action figure, which called it a Skiffguard disguise. And it was known as that for many years, it still is. But when the Solo movie came out, we all saw that this disguise was actually already on the Falcon because Beckett was wearing the same disguise on Kessel. So it really is Lando's helmet and has been all along. He just had it tucked away, buried amongst all the capes. Now, if you want to make a helmet of your own, I put a link to my pattern in the description. And you can make yours however you like, because you know there are lots of different ways that you can make a skiff guard helmet. But this is how Odin makes. Now, you could uh, paint the mask portion black and red and just say that Lando took out Darth Maul. You could. But you know what I think I'll do? Paint it like way it is in the movie. <laughs> That's probably for the best. You'll get a lot less angry comments. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you only ever get good comments anyway. Nobody's ever negative on your YouTube yeah, channel. Yeah, <laughs> he's just saying. <laughs> I want to thank Stephen Dodds, Ben Withers, and all of my Patreon supporters. My Patreon support is the number one thing that makes this show possible. If you like the video, don't forget to subscribe. Have an idea for something for me to make? Please leave a comment below. And if you make any of these projects, you can send me a picture. <laughs>